so we got us a pretty beautiful morning actually it's like the last i don't know quiet five hours we'll have for about five days um I, i'm not even sure what the hurricane that's off the coast is called right now but it's not technically supposed to hit where i live but the remnants of it are supposed to be moving in in the next few hours so we're just trying to take advantage of this super nice calm windless day i got probably maybe an hour and a half before the wind really kicks up to be like unfishable or i guess you could say almost unsafe so right now we're just gonna drop some frozen sand fleas down on some bridge pilings see if we can't get into some tog might even look for a sheep's head if we if time permits there we go uh. Ah, that can't be good. That was such a, oh, oh God, yeah. How'd I know? I knew that couldn't be good. Such a weird hit. Ooh, that'd be, that'd be brutal if that's what we see all day. Little dogfish. There we go. Ooh. That's a tog. Not a big one, but it's a start. Actually, funny enough, that guy might probably be, I don't know, maybe an inch under keeper size. It's actually not a bad tog. Not a monster, not a, I don't think a keeper, but not a bad start. All right, so that's a good sign. Um, the bite windows, man, on these extreme tides seem to be like real short. And I think it's because the amount of current that the fish are fighting against is so great that, you know, their only focus is kind of holding a position during like the height of the tide whereas once it starts to slow and switch i think that's when they maximize their time feeding i think they kind of realize that that's like their best shot oh there was a hit there we go there we go another tog for sure got that tog feel to them Yep. Going in the wrong direction. Now that guy's a little bit smaller. Ooh. Sorry, buddy. Alright, that is not where I wanted him to go. Easy, buddy. Easy. There, are one slip, slippery fish, too. Poor guy. I'm just trying to get him back in. There he goes. Now we are using right now a three quarter ounce jig. Um, I try not to really go heavier than that in the back, back water just because it just lessens the sensitivity, at least in my eyes, for feeling for bites. Oh, right there's a hit. Oh, dang, that was a good hit. Whew, look at that, man. Don't get really much cleaner than that. Feeding the fish. Right, that's a perfect size bait right there. And one of the things like when fishing's like this, when you have that one to two hour window, you gotta just be going, going, going. Sometimes I feel like it's not as enjoyable because you're trying to get your line in the water and you know maximize the time you have. Cause you know you might not get that bite window for another five hours and unless you're spending the whole day on the water there's a fish you know two hours might be all you got oop that was an easy release i didn't even want to mess with that guy anyway he was pretty tiny but that bite window 
seems like it's just started because when we first got out here man it was slow as can be but it wasn't really the window that I was trying to actually hit all right I just put on a half a sand flea especially if you get like these jumbo fleas like that size like I don't know maybe a two inch plus sand flea I like to split them in half just because it's more of a like manageable size bait for the jig sometimes you put too much on there oh there was a hit right there come on come back like that I don't know if I could set on that oh yep yeah. he got it oh yeah that's a bigger tog Not really fighting like a tog though that's the weird thing hit like a tog but isn't really fighting like one damn that's actually a really nice tog wild how different that one fought Ugh. that's a keeping size tog right there man look at that i feel like a lot of the tog fishing is anticipating hits like, man, something was just already messing with that. Like, oh, there we go. I could feel them grab it, especially the bigger ones. You could feel the, like, the little bit of um, slack in the line of them lifting it up. And you almost have to, like, give them just a second. That's actually not a bad, as he splashes us, um, tog. Because, I mean, you see how small their mouths are. They're not... They're not like stripers or something a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's actually not a bad-sized tug. But, I mean, you could see where we hooked them. Like, that's like perfect hook set. That fish isn't getting away when it's pinned like that. Oops. you back in all right right now it seems like less is more I'm gonna put half a sand flea on it's definitely helping with the hook set ratio um, cuz that's like a perfect bite size bait even for like a decent sized tog you know what I mean um, if it seems like they start getting finicky again we'll switch it back to a full sand flea but uh, having them seems to be the money move right now for us. Oh, there we go. That little guy. Hoping something bigger comes along, but... Tell you what even the smaller ones have some spunk to them like this one's by no means a monster but they'll give you a few good runs yeah like that's not a bad sized tog honestly especially on light tackle Slipping. There we go. Ooh, there we go. Oh, son, son, that's a better tog or a feistier one out. One of the two. Oh, yeah, that ain't, that ain't bad. Son, look at that. I'll tell you what, man. If you had to pick perfect weather conditions 
you know, I know everybody's got their own idea of perfect conditions, but today in my eyes is about as good as it gets from a wind perspective. And honestly, the top, uh, the fog, I love fishing in the fog. Um, I feel like it keeps a lot of guys off the water. So like today being a weekend, I'm kind of thankful that it's pretty foggy out because it could be pretty whoa, busy out on the water on the weekends. But um, if you get the guys that are a little unsure and aren't very familiar with an area that don't, you know, take their boat out, it's, it just makes it a little bit easier on the kayak guys. Dang, son, look at that guy. Let's get him over here. Beautiful tug. All right. I've been a little more selective with uh, hook sets because right now it's like as soon as you get to the bottom, you have a hit. But I'm trying to hold out because a lot of the initial hits I'm getting right now are definitely smaller tog. And I'm just trying to wait for like a bigger one to swoop in and try and steal the crab from them. waited on that one oh shark oh, man thought I was done with them guess not The only downfall of fishing the lighter jigs in deeper water is it does take a little bit longer to get where you need to go, but usually that offsets with better sensitivity and feeling for hits. Also, not to mention, I feel like the fights of the fish are much better with lighter weight. Because if you're fishing real heavy stuff, you're fighting pretty much the weight of what you're using to get to the bottom or this it's like almost fishing a bare hook where the fish can actually fight I'll tell you too uh, one of the positives of fishing like a vertical structure like this is very rarely and I caution this very not very often am I losing many jigs um, just because you're able to kind of keep your jig out of the structure which makes a huge difference of fishing maybe like a wreck or some type of submerged structure at least with the vertical you could kind of the, the biggest times I usually lose jigs are if like a bigger fish runs me into something that I can't get them out of Oh. Um, but most of the time, you know, you're not really spending much money on jigs with this type of fishing because you're able to get them out. go with a bigger bait see if we find a bigger fish we've been having it but um kind of want to give a uh bigger bait a chance right now one of two things we'll either get into a nicer fish or the small fish will pick it apart but it's one of those things if you if you don't try something different you might never get a different result Oh, that's a nicer one. Oh, yeah. 
So maybe the bigger bait might be the move. Uh, it kind of feels like a sheep's head the way it's fighting, but I think it's going to be a tog. Yeah, jumbo tog. Look at that. That's actually a really nice one. So maybe that's the move. Maybe we gotta move to a bigger bait like that. That's a fat tog. Alright, I think we're gonna keep putting on a whole sand flea at this point. Um, I did pack another pack of frozen sand fleas because we're kind of getting down to the wire. We've got like 15, maybe 16 or so left. But that last fish uh, might be enough to convince me to just fish whole sand fleas, try and selectively find those bigger fish. some weight to him initially and then kind of might have been swimming up yeah he's not guy had a little bit more oomph to him they are man I'm telling you very underrated fish a lot of guys this time of year are you know they kind of discount these fish but on lake tackle, there's not many fish that you can catch in shore that give you a fight like them. Like sheep's head, yes. Uh, stripers, yes. But aside from that, like no dig on flounder or you know other species like that. But you're not getting the same you know close combat fight that you would. I gotta cherish this day because we probably won't be able to get out for another four or five days because the weather just looks real abysmal the next few days, including later today. In fact, after this drop, I'm gonna check my phone because they were calling for big thunderstorms. Um, I don't wanna get caught out here in one. I'll tell you what, I do think too, when that barometric pressure drops, it does drive these fish to feed a lot more. I've definitely noticed a correlation on these like this, where a low pressure system on its way and moving in and that barometric pressure is dropping. Fishing usually gets better. Oof. Ah, oh, son of a gun. Let's see if I can't get that fish to come back. There we go. Got him that time. Ah, little guy. up man holy moly that's actually not a bad one he just didn't really fight for me Ooh.
here we go. Another cookie cutter. There's like a little hole right here and they seem to be just stacked in it according to the depth finder. Oh yeah. Oh, they're definitely down there. Oh, son. There we go. I knew I had to miss a few to get one. 